Okay, so in the question it tells us that the that's the cable, okay? It tells us here that this distance here is six meters. They tell us that this distance here is ten meters. So I'll have an angle here of theta. They also tell us that the girder has a weight of 15,000 newtons okay and that weight must be acting because it's a uniform girder that this must be acting five meters away from the end because the central mass will be in the center so that's five meters because the whole thing is 10 meters let's just label this force y uh, i'll put it on this side so let's just call that force y for the minute uh, we'll give ourselves a little line there so Ask us, they're primarily asking us what the tension is in the cable. So I'm going to use the principle of moments here. I'm just going to draw a quick line here. I need to find out what theta is, okay, because of the angle. And I know that therefore theta must equal, uh, when we use the sine function, so inverse sine of 6 divided by 10, opposite over hypotenuse. And that should give me an answer of 6 divided by 10, shift inverse sine. 36.869, 36.869 degrees. Okay, let's keep it in this raw format for a minute. Um, I'm going to take moments about, let's just call this point, um, I don't know, let's call it point V. <laughs> so take moments. So taking moments about V. So I basically got an angle here, theta, which is going to be the same as that, okay, as you know. So I'm going to have 15,000 times by the cos of this angle, because I want it perpendicular to the girder. So cos 36.869, and that particular moment, uh, so that's the force there, times by its distance, which is 5 meters away. Okay, that will equal y, the force y times by its perpendicular distance away from the pivot, which is 10 meters. Okay, and if you do all of that, you should get y is equal to, so 15,000 times by cos 36.869 gives me 12,000. 12,000 times 5 gives me 6,000, 60,000. 60,000 divided by 10 gives me 6,000. So y is 6,000. Newtons, which is the correct answer, it seems. Okay, uh, so that's all right. The second part of the question. So the second part of the question is asking for show that support force on the girder from the ground has a horizontal component of 3.6 and a vertical component of 10.2 kilonewtons. So all I need to do now, and I'm just going to get rid of this. Don't need that anymore. Uh, I'm just going to draw on the various forces from the support. There has to be a vertical force here acting. Okay, I'm going to call this force R, almost like a reaction force. And I'll have a force going along here as well. I'm going to call this force X. Okay, so there's a force R going upwards, force X going vertical. I'm going to resolve things vertically. Okay, I'm going to resolve things in the vertical plane. Okay, you know from your alternate angles I've got a parallel line here, and parallel line here, and I've got a parallel line here, parallel line here, which means that these angles are kind of like alternate angles. They turn out to be exactly the same. Okay. R, if I resolve vertically, so let's tell the examiner what I'm doing. So resolving vertically, resolving vertically. So R is the vertical force. Don't need to do any angle business. Plus Y cause of that particular angle okay because I want that component the horizontal component the yeah sorry not horizontal the vertical component of y I want the vertical component of y vertical component of r and both of these one two going upwards will be equaled by the 15,000 coming down so r equals 15,000 minus can take in this this lot and take this section over here which is 6,000, I know what y is, I've just worked out what y is, 6,000 times by 
the cos of theta, which gives me r, which is the vertical component, 6,000 times by cos 36.869 is 4800, 15,000 minus 480 gives me 10.199, which is 10.2 kilonewtons to 3SF. That is the vertical component. Okay, if I want the horizontal component, I've got x here, I've only got two. Well, that's a vertical force, that's a vertical force, so I can ignore them now. But I'm going to be talking about these forces. So I need a force in this direction, and I have got a force in this direction. So I'm resolving vertically, uh, horizontally this time. Resolving horizontally. Okay, resolving horizontally. Uh, this force, x, must equal that force there. So x equals... x will equal y sine theta. Okay, I know theta is 36.869. Okay, that's what theta is. We worked that out before. Therefore, x, which is the vertical component of the support, that's going to be y, which I know y is 6,000. Worked that out before. 6,000 times by the sine of 36.869, which gives me an answer of 3599, which is 3.6 kilonewtons. Okay. So I've got 10.2 kilonewtons here. I've got 3.6 kilonewtons here. And now they're going to ask me to work out the magnitude. Okay, the magnitude, which is the overall resultant, if you like, of these two forces. And so that's going to be, I've got a force going along, which is 3.6 kilonewtons. I've got a force going up, which is 10.2 kilonewtons. They want this. I want this guy, I want the result and I want the magnitude. Okay, so using Pythagoras, let's just call this force A. Force A is going to equal the root of 3.6 squared plus 10.2 squared, and that should give me 3.6 squared plus 10.2 squared equals 117, and the root of 117 gives me 10.81. 2, but uh, we can just round that to 10.8 kilonewtons to 3SF. Oops, that's kind of gone off the table there. Okay, so that is the resultant. So A here is 10.8 kilonewtons, and I believe that is the question done. Okay, thank you.